Hi everybody, it's Rebecca Virginia and in today's video I'm going to be showing you 12 Dollar Tree Christmas gifts. Six of these Christmas gifts will be using items from Cricut they are sponsoring today's video. Let's get started with the first DIY. First up, I have these adorable cupcake socks using some fuzzy socks from the Dollar Tree. I'm starting off this DIY by taking these really cute fuzzy gingerbread socks from the Dollar Tree and rolling them up. Now, we need something to keep the socks rolled up and held together, and a rubber band would have been perfect in this situation, but I didn't have one, so I took a piece of jute and wrapped it around the bottom of the socks. To create the cupcake part of this DIY, we're going to take cupcake liner. I ended up using two because one was just too flimsy, and then I placed the socks inside of the cupcake holder. Next, I took one of the clear loot bags from the Dollar Tree and placed the cupcake sock inside of that. And it would have looked just fine inside of that, but I really didn't like the two ends sticking out of the sides of it. So I ended up cutting a portion of the bag off so that it would be resized and just fit the sock cupcake a little bit better. Once that was done, I wrapped up the sock cupcake again and taped down the one part that was still poking out. Then I used a silver twist tie which came with the loot bags to tie off the top and I did cut down the top of the loot bag to make it shorter and stand up a little bit more. Then to add a bit more of an embellishment and to make it look more like a gift I added a bow as well as a jingle bell to the sock cupcake. I made another sock cupcake with a different cozy sock from the Dollar Tree and used some red truck Christmas tree ribbon on that one. Next up is an adorable gift for any bakers in your life, or even if they're not bakers, this chocolate chip mix from the Dollar Tree is really easy to make. And you're just going to need three items from the Dollar Tree. The first is an oven mitt, and you're going to need the one with the pocket. And of course we need the pocket because we're going to be slipping in some of the Dollar Tree Betty Crocker chocolate chip cookie mix and a rubber spatula. And to really elevate this project, I'm going to be taking some white iron-on vinyl and using my Cricut to just make this even more personalized. I'm using my Cricut Maker for this project. This is definitely my favorite Cricut machine because it can cut so many different types of materials. But I'm just going to be using vinyl for the majority of these projects and just keeping it nice and simple. You could see that the Cricut Maker is detecting the tool that is in my tool slot and just going to work and cutting everything out for me. Then when I'm done, I will just unload it and I'm ready to personalize my project a bit more. I found this really cute saying, Baking Spirits Bright on Cricut Design Space, so I didn't have to do any of the designing or any of the work. It was already there for me. And now I'm taking my Easy Pressed Mini and just transferring the lettering onto the Dollar Tree pad. This next part is a bit of an extra step. I'm making a quick bow using this adorable ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I just cross the ribbon over and then I pull down the back and you can see it forms a very quick and easy bow. Then this part was a little bit difficult to get on camera because you really have to use both hands and I was trying to keep everything in the shot. But then you could either take a piece of ribbon or I decided to take a piece of jute and you're just going to tie in the center and then you can kind of mess around with the ribbon and the bows. You can either add a glue dot from the Dollar Tree or a piece of tape. For mine, I added a bit of hot glue because I'm going to be using this mainly as a decorative gift. And then I tucked in the chocolate chip mix and the rubber spatula. This is a super easy and inexpensive gift to make, and I love the way that the iron-on from the Cricut just enhanced the project. The next gift is a Melting Snowman Hot Chocolate Jar. I'm beginning this DIY with a craft bottle from the Dollar Tree. These look like mason jars, but they're plastic. Next, I am using a Melted Snowman principle that I found online. I'll link it below if you would like to use this exact principle as well. And all I'm doing is cutting it out into the shape of my lid and gluing it down. I've seen online that a lot of people are using white hot chocolate for this so it looks more like a snowman, but I thought it was really hard to find that. So if I couldn't find it, I was thinking most people probably couldn't either. So I just used a packet of regular hot chocolate. 
After I poured the hot chocolate contents in the jar, it was time to begin adding the marshmallows. These are from the Dollar Tree. They're the Fireside brand and they're delicious by the way. You just fill the jar the entire way up with marshmallows until it creates three stacked on one another so it starts to look like a snowman. I used an embossing tool to paint on my snowman's face. I just used regular acrylic paint since it's on the outside, not the inside of the jar where the food is. I added arms too because I thought it would be cute and I just couldn't stop that, just the face. To wrap up our hot chocolate snowman gift, I thought some ribbon would look really pretty, but I ended up going with jute. I just wrapped it around the lid a couple of times and then added a bow and tilted it to the side. And that's all you need to do to make your own melting snowman hot chocolate jar. I found these beautiful wax warmers from the Dollar Tree and knew that if I added a Cricut decal and some wax melts also from the Dollar Tree, that this would make an amazing gift for someone. And all that we need for this project are the wax warmer, some tea lights, the wax melts, and then if you're going to wrap it up as a gift, some gift embellishments. I decided to use the vinyl paper from the Dollar Tree. This works really well if you're going to be cutting out a larger font or larger decal. If you get too intricate, then I found that the Dollar Tree paper will rip and tear. But for this project, it worked out great. I just loaded it into my Cricut Maker and let the maker do all the work cutting out the Merry Christmas vinyl. To add a little bit of color to our white wax warmer, I had picked up some Baker's twine in a set of three at the Dollar Tree and I am taking the red one and just tying it around the top and adding a quick bow. I thought it added a kind of candy cane looking touch and a bit of color to our otherwise white and black wax warmer. Next you are going to pop in a tea light to the bottom section of your wax warmer. And then I got these delicious smelling wax melts from the Dollar Tree. This was in the apple cinnamon scent. And I just popped out three of those and put them in the top of the wax warmer. And then I have three to use on either another gift or maybe even for myself. To wrap this up as a gift for someone, I found these really pretty poinsettia gift bags at the Dollar Tree. You could pop this wax warmer down into the gift bag and then take some more baker's twine or some sparkly green ribbon I also found at the Dollar Tree and tie it at the top and then present it as a gift. But for video purposes, I wanted you to actually be able to see this DIY, so I left it without the gift wrap. The next DIY uses a Dollar Tree plate, some fabric, and a decoupaging technique using Mod Podge. The first step is taking the Dollar Tree glass plate and some rubbing alcohol, and I just put that on a paper towel and wiped all over my clear plate. And the reason I'm doing this is because the Mod Podge will really show any fingerprints on the back. So you want to give it a nice wipe down to get rid of any residue or fingerprints or smudges. I kept going back and forth with which kind of fabric I wanted to use. I love the gingerbread man, but ultimately ended up going with these little teapots and teacups because it had some glitter that I really liked. So after choosing that, I started with the Mod Podge. So I just put it down in the center of my plate. Then took a foam brush and started to wipe the Mod Podge all around. You want to not use too much at first because you don't want it to get kind of gloopy and, you know, gathered in certain places. So I started with more of a thin layer and then I went back in around some spots that I knew would cause me trouble, like the edges of the plate. And the reason I'm being so diligent and not having a lot of globs of the Mod Podge is because it is possible that the lines will dry and show through on the other side of the fabric. So I'm trying to get a pretty even layer, but you did see me go over the edges again because it is harder for the fabric to stick to that area. Then I placed the fabric on top and just started using my hands to smooth down the fabric all over the plate, making sure that it didn't gather in certain areas. 
you will feel the Mod Podge kind of seep through the fabric and that is normal so you will feel a little bit so don't get concerned that you put on too much Mod Podge. Then after I have smoothed everything down, I am taking a small pair of scissors and I am just cutting off the extras. I think someone said it was kind of like making a pie crust and I thought that was very fitting. And you're just going to go as close to the edge as you possibly can. You can always go back in later after the Mod Podge has dried and fix any areas, but just try to get as close as possible to that plate edge. Then after you have cut everything, you can wait for the Mod Podge to dry, maybe about 30 minutes on the other side. That's what I did. Um, a lot of the things that I read say you don't have to, but working with Mod Podge can be a little tricky, so I figured I would go ahead and wait for it to dry before moving on and taking in some more Mod Podge and basically doing the exact same thing, covering the entire plate. I gave it a full 24 hours to dry. I think it only needs probably a couple of hours, but I didn't want to touch it. And when I woke up the next day, it looked so beautiful. The fabric is perfectly adhered to the plate and I love how it came out. But of course, I had to enhance it a, a little bit more using my handy Cricut Maker. So I went ahead and cut out Merry Christmas to go on the top and the bottom of this really adorable cookie plate. The next DIY are these popular yarn hats that you can use as ornaments or on top of bottles. Beginning this DIY with a piece of cardstock measuring 6 inches in length and 1 and 1 16th inches in width. The reason I'm using cardstock instead of an old toilet paper roll like I've seen a lot of people use for this DIY is because the toilet paper roll is way too wide for the chocolate that we're going to be placing our yarn hat on. I measured out my yarn lengths to be 11 inches, but we do trim the top of this at the end, so as long as the yarn is long enough to loop through and not too short, the length of the yarn has some wiggle room. So to make our hats, grab your piece of yarn and fold it in half. One end will be open and one end will have a loop. Take the end with the loop and place it inside the cardstock circle we made, and bring the two ends up and place them through the loop and pull them tightly back through. Repeat this process with varying colors of yarn and create whatever pattern you want for your yarn hat. Once you have placed your yarn all the way around your cardstock circle, you're going to straighten out the yarn strands and grab all of them and push them inside the cardstock circle and then straighten out the yarn strands again. To make the pom-pom for the hat, I'm taking a strand of yarn and tying it around the top and then I'm tying it again in a loop because that's going to be our ornament hanger if the person chooses to use it as that after they have it on their chocolate or champagne bottle. Then I filled the inside with a cotton ball and trimmed off our pom-pom. To add a little bit more of an embellishment, I took these stickers from the Dollar Tree and added snowflakes onto the top of the hats. Then it was time to put the chocolate inside and you can see the hat fit perfectly on that. And I also put it on a sparkling apple cider bottle, but it would look really cute on the champagne bottle as well. This is another super quick, super simple Christmas gift DIY using a really cute candle from the Dollar Tree with this little pom-pom on top. And I thought the candle was super cute as is. I loved the pom-pom. All that I did was add a cute little Cricut decal that said, have yourself a merry little Christmas. You could personalize it even further with the person's last name or first name. But this is just an example of a really easy way that you can take a Dollar Tree item, add some Cricut details, and really turn it into a personalized Christmas gift. The next DIY Dollar Tree Christmas gift is a Christmas cookie crate that is great to transport cookies to friends and family. For this DIY, I am taking one of the wood crates from the Dollar Tree and then I grabbed this color Flamenco Red by Apple Barrel and I painted the crate. You don't really have to paint the front, just the sides and in between those wood slats. Then I took some Holly scrapbooking paper and I cut out one inch strips and I'm going to need three of them. And I'm going to be placing those on what kind of look like the wood slats in the crate. And to apply them, I just took a glue stick and placed that on the back of the scrapbooking paper. Then I just lined it up on the front of the wood crate and pressed down. 
I took a small pair of scissors that I got from the crafters score section of the Dollar Tree. I absolutely love these little scissors and trimmed off the extras. Then for a little bit further of a decal on the front, I used my Cricut Maker to cut out this really cute Christmas cookies lettering. So I went ahead and laid that down on the crate and I also added a little gingerbread man and Christmas tree decal to the sides. Before I fill up the crate with any actual cookies, I want to first line it. So I have this tissue paper that I got from the Dollar Tree. It has red and green little confetti kind of sprinkles on it. And I trimmed off the sides and then for the actual cookies that you bake, I would go ahead and place those into a bag. This is a poinsettia gift bag. And again, it just came in a pack from the Dollar Tree with the little silver twist ties. And all that I'm doing is trimming off the excess area at the top and then my cookie crate is ready to go. I saw these buffalo check ornaments at the Dollar Tree and absolutely fell in love with them. They are the perfect ornament to decorate a rustic looking Christmas tree. All that I did was take some vinyl. I actually used the vinyl from the Dollar Tree. It worked out really well again when you're cutting out larger lettering. I found that the Dollar Tree vinyl does work well. And these ornaments are so beautiful as is, but they are the perfect blank slate to add in some cricket lettering. You could put the last name of your family, maybe baby's first Christmas. I ended up going with these vinyl decals that I found in the Design Space app. So these were already made. I didn't have to worry about putting anything together. The creativity was already there for me thanks to Cricut Design Space. The next Dollar Tree gift is a rustic star candle. This candle holder from the Dollar Tree came with a really pretty ribbon and charm on it, but I'm going to be removing it and saving it for a future DIY. We're going to be covering the candle holder in scrapbooking paper, so I'm measuring out how long and wide my paper needs to be by wrapping it around the candle holder. Then, to add texture to the scrapbooking paper, I am taking a star hole punch and punching out stars along the top and bottom of the paper. Next, I took a bit of white paint and dry brushed it over where we cut out the stars so that the hole punches would stand out more. To add a rustic, cozy Christmas feel, I'm wrapping the top of the candle holder with jute and securing it in the back with a little bit of hot glue. To add color, I made a floral pick out of garland, holly berries, and a small pine cone, and I'm hot gluing that at an angle to the front of the candle holder. Lastly, I added a battery-operated candle, but the Dollar Tree has amazing smelling tea lights right now, so I highly suggest adding one of those to the candle holder if you plan on gifting this to a candle lover. Our next Dollar Tree DIY is a tree and a bottle necklace. To begin this DIY, we're going to cut off the gold base of our bottle brush tree so that it could fit in this tiny glass jar. Then I had some white ornament filler, so I put it down in the bottom of the jar, placed the tree in, and then added a little bit more ornament filler, and I used the tweezers to move the tree around a bit in the bottle. I found this icy blue baker's twine at the Dollar Tree, so I wrapped it around the top of our bottle, and I had one of these silver snowflake charms, which was pretty lucky, I just had it kind of lying around in my craft room, but you can use any charm that you have and I slipped that onto the baker's twine and then I frayed the edges a little bit. These picture hanging kits are at the Dollar Tree. You get the whole thing for a dollar. It's such a great deal and I love the O hooks that are in the picture hanging kit. So all that I did was twist it around a few times and it went right through the cork in the bottle and then I laced through my silver necklace chain. I love this DIY gift as a necklace but you could also use it as an ornament or gift it as a charm for a keychain. This Noel sign is the last DIY gift in my video. These beaded frames have been at the Dollar Tree for a while now and I keep seeing them brought out for each season so definitely pick one up because they're perfect for DIYs. I ended up taking some musical scrapbooking paper and cutting it out and just using a regular glue stick to glue it down onto our base. 
Instead of using my handwriting because it's not the best, I got these rub-on letters from the Dollar Tree and I'm using them to write out Noel. They're really easy to use. You just take the backing off, place it down, rub it a little bit, and then gently remove. To hang the bells off the Noel sign, I hot glued some jute down and also made a jute bow. I used a bit of hot glue on top of the jingle bell to get it to hold onto the jute. Then I began adding some of my floral picks onto the Noel sign, but I quickly realized that it would have been a lot better if I had put this down before I put down the jute bow and the bells, so I just ended up peeling that off, adding the floral embellishments that I wanted, and then hot gluing it back on. I also realized that I didn't place Noel at the dead center of my frame, so to kind of offset that mistake, I took a wood star and stained it with water and some brown paint, and then I just hot glued it next to the Noel to kind of make everything look like it flowed together a little bit more. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.